opening bell with the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikama. That's Connor Rogers. This is a Monday morning podcast, which means we're mock drafting, sort of mock drafting. A really fun topic here for you that you, I know that you guys are going to love and follow. If you know anything about college football, you know Bruce Feldman's freak list that comes out at The Athletic every single year. He's been doing this for years. It is truly, and I've said this to Bruce before, it, uh, I believe it was at the Combine when I first said this to him, this is one of the must read pieces of college football and even just football journalism every single year. Bruce does such a great job uh, talking to a lot of these schools from around the country, basically saying like, hey, who are some crazy athletes that you guys have in your program? So he's expanded it. He's got a hundred guys this year that he put out for this year's freak list. And Connor and I are going to go through, pick out some of our favorite run- ones, highlight them to you guys. And uh, a lot of it will be draft eligible people. So we'll give it a draft focus as well. But Connor, man, this is going to be a fun, fun exercise, man. We get to expose a lot of these guys to the people. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah, man, it's going to be cool. Obviously the work Bruce puts into this, it's kind of one of those exercises at this point where I would imagine People are so invested in this in the college football world that Bruce probably has to filter so many people that want to be a part of the schools and players and uh, obviously an incredible amount of players already on this. But I know he's been doing it for a long time where it's grown into, you know, it's like how people want to be on like the Pat McAfee show. It's that kind of thing at this point. It has that kind of power. So I think that the fact knowing probably what doesn't make the list makes the guys on it that much more special and you and i in our very own way are going to talk about the players that are the most intriguing to us and that might not mean the guys that are going to be first round prospects all the time but guys that could right now be projected as udfas and because of this athletic profile or something that stands out might turn themselves into an early day three day two player so i love this list and you nailed it trevor it is required reading yes for anybody invested in the nfl draft scouting world i don't want to say this is like easy for him now because i know how much work bruce puts into this thing to, to now make it a great videos list of embedded in it this that's when true, you know it's legit you remember when this thing first started i feel like it had to be um, i i don't even want to sell him short here but i remember it i feel like it was 2017 2018 ish when this like kind of started like around that time and I think he had maybe like 40 guys that he added to this list. And it was a really cool article to read right off the bat. Dude, like you just said, he's got a hundred now. So schools are probably just sending him all of the, they're almost like doing all of that investigative work for him. They're just like, please promo our guys. And then Bruce just gets to kind of pick his own and rank him into a top 100, which is uh, really cool. And it's, it's so great for any college football fan out there because it teaches him about some guys that are around the country who their favorite teams might go up against, give a primer against those guys. And then of course the NFL draft as well. It's a really great nugget, something that uh, is, is on the early portion of the NFL draft radar. That's really cool. Buddy, before we get into this list, please walk me through the Zach Wilson roller coaster this week, <laughs> this weekend. I'm not laughing that the guy got hurt. Obviously I, I love Zach Wilson. I hope that he gets back to the field as soon as possible, but it was wild to hear all the training camp hype, all of the, oh, this could be a great, incredible year for the Jets, incredible year. Zach Willis is going to take this next step. And then the play happens in preseason, and it's just every – so many people are just like, yeah, the ACL, that's it. It's done. The season's done. What Are we, are we trading for Jimmy G? Well, I mean, did you, did you buy <laughs> oh, the Oh, no Jimmy- time wasted. <laughs> Jimmy G was immediately on the Jets. What and- was your favorite part of the Jimmy G New York Jets? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, and I saw some people that were like, oh my God, the panic from Jets fans. I'm like, do you realize most of these people were alive when Chad Pennington's shoulder exploded in the preseason when that Jets team was supposed oh, to be no. amazing? Yeah. The mini test of Verde injury the years yep. before that. Like the Jets and quarterbacks have such a trend of it being ruined going into a promising season before it even starts that it felt like that all over again. Let me for a second, unfortunately, make this a little bit personal. So, Trevor, this week in fantasy baseball, I am in a very long-standing keeper league um, mm-hmm. that is takes up way too much time of all of our lives. And there are people in like across the country in this league, and it stays together for like ten years. Fantasy baseball is a full-time job. Grind, grind, full-time and, job. Yeah, this is a pretty serious league. So, I traded uh, a second-round pick, a future second-round pick for Fernando Tatis. 
Two days later, he gets suspended oh, for 80 games. He's done no. for the year. And I can't keep him. I, he's, he's not keeper eligible. So it's just, for, I'm in the first place. So I was like, let me go for it now. Try to win this year. I'll trade a future pick for him. I lose him. So <laughs> Friday night, I think, thanks to the Twitter doctors, I, I swear to God, I have text message proof. I did not think it was an ACL at my doctor expert opinion. I was like, man, he the way he got up, like no, a lot of going around no. about that. All Twitter, though, every guy with PhD, uh, MD, PT in their username said it was an ACL. And I'm just the guy on the couch with no medical degree. Uh, so I was like, oh, wow, this stinks. And Jimmy G's now on the Jets and everybody's laughing at us again. <laughs> then the Mets, who have just been the savior of my life this year, lose in extra innings when they should have walked it off in the bottom of the ninth, which what, like the Mets are going to lose games. That was fine. But it was like the cherry on top of like, what else can happen? Like, what What else can possibly happen in the sports world? Like, is Igor Shosturkin going to retire? Like, what? I need something right now. <laughs> so, thank God, everything bounced back a little bit, Zach. So, it sounds like Zach's okay. It sounds like he could even yeah. be ready for week one. I wouldn't push that. But that was my personal roller coaster, just to say one of the millions of Jets fans out there how I felt. Uh, good Lord. And I will never, ever, ever trust a Twitter doctor ever again in my life. No, I mean, look. There are some people out there who would like that's their shtick on Twitter, and it's and, a brand thing. And, and, I, it, and everybody's got one. Thing, everybody's got one. It, but what bothers and and you know what? Like you got to do your job. Like I get like I get it. Like a lot. Some some people are employed for that. Like some people. Um, we have one at PFF, somebody who kind of like looks at injuries as they happen, evaluates injury injuries, which try to kind of get ahead of it. But even our guy Mario, he never says the words confirmed. That's the part that bothered me and, and annoys yeah. me so much is that obviously whoever gets first on this Zach Wilson injury news, it was like the Tom Brady retirement news, right? Every time the season ends, it's like, okay, which insider is going to be able to break this first because it's going to be huge news. But the fact that you had people out here not even saying like, ooh, knee, knee went a little bit of a weird direction, could be an ACL here. This is kind of something that they should be monitoring. This is something you should be ready for. For anybody to say that an injury was confirmed when you're not in the room, when you didn't evaluate the player, like that's the stuff that really, really bothers me. Uh, that was the biggest crock of shit, I will say. Of, of <laughs> when when we were watching uh, that night, we were all watching, we were all waiting yeah. for the next update on Zach Wilson, and you've got people who weren't even in the room, aren't even on the team, saying these words like, yep, confirmed, this is it. And it's just like, Calm down. Well, like, and here, I mean, this this is what bothered me too. Like, and I, I of course posted a meme about it. Um, it. Just that we had to go from this kid. He's 23, spraining his knee on the field, and nobody knew what the injury was. And it, within 30 minutes, people were drawing up Jimmy G trade proposals. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude. And we do this on the show all the time. Like, we are the Madden franchise, like podcast that in, over summer we're gonna not do that a ton during the season but like we we milk that a ton but when it happens in real time it was just like oh my god can we breathe can we br it's preseason i all i did for a month was talk about how much i can't wait for preseason football because that's better than no football it's true and within an hour i realized how much i hate hate most of it like i love like evaluating the rookies and all that but the timeline man it's it's nuts I was gonna. It's I nuts. was gonna say, look, George Pickens is going off, so I love the preseason. I mean, preseason's great. You nailed for me. that one. The That's preseason. The preseason's great for me. Look, I tweeted this. I think on Friday, just to make sure that everybody was reminded of this. <laughs> preseason reps only matter if they can the priors. That's it. That's it. That's it. If the guy is good or if the guy is bad, if you happen to say that before the ball was snapped in the preseason, you are right. Close the page. Don't watch that player anymore. Count on as a scouting win. That's how we survive, baby. That's where. That's why this podcast is here. Dude, the best is the people that just tweet the stats, and it's like you got the earlier players not looking as statistically great as the later drafted players, and it's like, well, maybe they played against the ones or barely played at all. Oh, or, there's always an excuse. Always like, an excuse in the preseason. It's a beautiful time. Like beautiful. The, the lack of – it really is. You can you can get any narrative going that you want. Yeah. It's, it's create your own adventure on, huh. on Twitter. You can – I mean, how many players are the steals of your fantasy draft right now slash thread? 100%. I, 9 million. 100%. 9 million. I, there's no way I lose a league this year. No. I won't lose a bet. I won't lose anything. Me and you, me and you are batting – 
lifetime we're batting a thousand on pre never missed on a player evaluation never, <laughs> never missed never missed. there is a preseason clip or stat that somehow validates my opinion of a player either good or bad so that's why we uh we absolutely love the season all right right before we get into this list because we're going over bruce feldman's freak list uh we're not going through all 100 guys but we're going to point out some guys that really stood out to us uh got to read everybody's favorite ad reads from our friends over at manscape gentlemen Y'all strive for gold in your life, right? Gold medals, gold watches, gold everything. That is the standard. However, there's a certain type of man who goes above and beyond that extra mile, that standard. He walks in the confidence of an eagle and giggles in the face of danger. He is a big, hairless, winning machine. Look at those adjectives. And when he unzips his pants, he sees platinum, folks. Next level. That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce to you their best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming, and I can trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million men worldwide who use Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the promo code, and this is a new one, folks, NFLSE. If you were ever thinking about buying a Manscaped product before, you get 20% off and Free shipping. If you use the promo code NFLSE, that would also really help this podcast out. So if you've ever been on the fence about it, now is the time to try them out. Manscaped's new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle that they've ever offered you, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. 20% off free shipping using the promo code NFLSE. Manscaped.com. 20% off free shipping. NFLSE. It's time that you enjoy the finer things in life and get yourself a Platinum Package for your platinum package that's it yeah you like i said if you guys have ever been on the fence with it before help out the podcast nflse is a direct way to help us here and uh we'd really uh we'd really appreciate it connor where do you want to start with this one you got uh, you got all 100 to choose from now on this list we have some guys that we've already brought up in summer scouting that i think that we should probably mention again because some of them are quite literally incredible athletic freaks that we've got some new information and in athletic testing on here but uh where do you want to start here with this one I got to start with an international player because these guys, it, to me, are the most fascinating more often than not in the scouting world because of their, could be because of their limited football background or limited resources and, sure. and development before they get to a program like Michigan. Julius Welshoff. Trevor, I, I have to be honest. Oh, the I, Michigan edge. The Michigan edge rusher, right? Michigan edge rusher. Okay. All six foot seven, 266 pounds of him. Man, I did not know much about him, and th that's the beauty of the Freaks list. I often tell people um, that I use that my most important aspect of the Freaks list is finding small school guys that I I'm not going to get to or my area connections are, are not going to go through that area. But this is a guy from a big school who hasn't played a lot of, you know, actual, a lot of more special teams, it sounds like, than defensive reps or production. Sure. Julius Welshoff before coming to Michigan, his background is mind blowing. Bruce in this article said that he was a six foot six, 220 pound former champion skier from Germany doing backflips on his skis and walking 50 yards on his hands. I, this guy needs to be in SSX three. This guy needs to be yes. in video games. This is like, it, you're right. It's a video game character in a sense, Just the kind of testing that he puts up is just fascinating to me that you and obviously it's it's all there they're saying that uh his three cone is six seven six which at that size is out of this world they do this flexibility test ankle mobility test that you know one of his teammates said guys usually get about 12 inches he got 23 inches everything about him considering what? his size doesn't make any sense where i'm like man He's been with the program for a little bit now. I believe he's a fifth-year player. But if they get that green light to turn on, he might be a pretty freaky rotational pass rusher, or even getting away from that. Just the skiing background. Trevor, I was mind-blown by this guy's background, and, and now I do have him obviously written down. Um, I'm excited to see what he can do, because that's just that freakish tester. Freakish. Dude, that is... That's some insane stuff. The, the, the Michigan Strength and Conditioning Program, and I would just say, like, overall athletic program is pretty wild what they've been able to yeah. do over the uh them and Penn over the last State, couple of years it's insane 
it's truly Same. insane. And like the skiing background, I love that. I love I love multi sport athleticism with these guys. You know, like that's that's something that that really intrigues me. And he's a fifth year senior, so he is a draft eligible guy, but doesn't have a ton of football production yet. So we'll see if he gets it this year. Obviously, he wasn't going to play over David Ojabo and good point. Eden Hutchinson last year, but might be a lot of opportunity for him this year. So I think that uh, that's that's a really good shout out to start us off. I've got I've got to start off with a player who we have mentioned before somebody who is very high on our edge rusher list and that is andre carter from from army because he checks in at number 13 on bruce feldman's freak list six foot seven 260 pounds all right so like in another unique build you mentioned a guy who was about six foot six six foot seven andre carter is another guy but in this little blurb Feldman said Carter's length is only more amazing when you factor in. He also had a blazing 4.2 in his pro agility test. That's the short shuttle this offseason. That's crazy for a guy who is that big. Wild. I think that's we're going to do that for a couple of guys that we've loved in summer scouting. Give you guys some extra context. But remember, this is a player who had 15 and a half sacks last year, 18 and a half tackles for loss. You look at him. And you, at least I certainly did when I turned on the tape and I was like, all right, this guy's probably just, I'll say a gimmick player. Like I figure you, you're just, you're just putting this giant pterodactyl on the edge because he got so much length and he's not man. He's a way better athlete than you would give credit for a player who stands as tall as he does. And, and it just, the, the things that we do, we've talked about this over summer scouting. So I won't talk too much about him. You guys can go listen to this episode. What he is able to do from a functional athletic standpoint, flexibility standpoint, burst, speed, twitch, for a player who just has that big of a frame, I wanted to give context to you guys again, more evidence to the fact that Andre Carter is the real deal. He is somebody that you've got to watch this upcoming football season. He's got to be on your edge rush rankings. You've got to get some eyes on him because uh, he's truly a unique player, and that's why he checked in at number 13 here for uh, Feldon's Freak List. Man, yeah, it was cool to see guys like that that are a big focus of this draft cycle. But then when you see it in there, especially when everybody's going, why is this guy an army, right? He's going to get questions of where he plays and all those things. So when you see them on the freaks list and what they could do, it's pretty freaking cool, man. It, it That's the ones that do impact the draft so significantly. Another guy uh, for me that... We we didn't have in our top fives when we did edge players, but I am circling back to and, and really intrigued by what he can do this year is Will McDonald, the Iowa State defensive end. He was high on this list, wasn't he? What yeah, was he, he was the fifth player that they listed. And, you know, they, they, always, they say that uh, he's an elite athlete who can do backflips standing still and has videos jumping over cars. That's what Matt Campbell said about him. They think his vert is going to be around 42 or 43 inches and that he's going to hit 11 feet in the broad. So to be that explosive as an edge player that's probably going to play around 240 pounds this year, that's pretty freakish stuff. And it helps that there's a lot of guys on this list, Trevor. And it, it might be because, like you said, well, Shop, they're at a big program. They're playing behind guys. They have crazy athleticism scores in a lot of different areas, but they just they haven't played any football or they haven't been very productive on the football field. Will McDonald is a double-digit sack guy already. So the fact that you know that going in, that he's going to put up those kind of explosive scores makes him that much more intriguing to me. And Iowa State, under Matt Campbell, they've produced you know significant NFL players, significant NFL prospects at this point where th there's no hesitation at all about what this guy could be. I'm looking. I got to look up his PFF grade, what he had last year. Uh, computers running because I definitely have to watch McDonald a lot more this year. What was his overall grade? What I mean, yeah, first that? team All American, 14 tackles for a loss, five forced fumbles. I didn't think we had him that high. He probably had a, a pretty, pretty so, fat grade. Okay, so his pass rush grade yes. was 5.3, and that's his game. I mean, he's yes. a lighter, he's a lighter edge. His, his, he's got, yeah. His run defense grade was 47.3. And that's so, not, that is, you're right. He's a yeah. rotational guy right now. The NFL level, obviously at Iowa State, they, this guy's going to play all the time. But right now he projects as that true NASCAR package rusher out wide. But man. Yeah, run defense grade. This was, the, last year was his worst grade, but he's never been above 63. But he's also, he's also never been below a 76 in the pass rush category. He was even as a freshman, right? 80, he, dude, he had 84.1 pass yeah. rush grade as a freshman. Yeah. 
and he redshirt freshman. But still, all right, that's impressive. That's impressive. I'm cool with it. Uh, no, I, I want to bring a new guy to the table. I'm going back to Michigan, going back to the Michigan well. Athletic strength and conditioning staff of Michigan, they're getting some crazy guys in there. They're doing some crazy things with them. DJ Turner, the senior cornerback for Michigan. I don't know exactly how tall he is because there are some places that say that he's like 5'9". Michigan lists him, to six, lists him at six foot. A couple of recruiting databases I've found had him at like 5'11 now. So I think he's probably somewhere between 5'10", 5'11", especially after watching his tape after looking him up on the on this list. I think he's probably around 5'10", 5'11". Started at 177. Now he's about 185. Feldman has him at 187, but I'm sure that's a little bit on the higher side. So I'm going to go down a little bit from that. This dude's speed and agility is next level. And if there's a position where speed and athletic and agility can oh, really yeah. shine, it is at playing corner. Okay. This is what Feldman says about him. He is the fastest guy on the Wolverines, having hit 23.07 miles per hour on the GPS. Just to give you guys some context, the fastest player all of last year in the NFL using GPS technology was Jonathan Taylor, who had a 22.13 miles per hour rush. So this guy's fastest time is faster than the fastest NFL player was last year. I don't even know. Um, when's the last time somebody recorded a 23? Raheem Moser recorded oh a 23 God. the year before. 23.09. And Raheem is a special have, athlete. Do we have a Tyree kill in there? I'm wondering if we get Tyree. No, I mean like. Well, he was pro day only. The rest of the. No, no, no. I'm talking about like this is in-season stuff. This is in-season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In recorded NFL. times. Yeah. So. Okay. No, I mean, Raheem Mostert. I gotcha. 2020 was the only one who recorded. That's uh, crazy when you think about it like a that. A run that was that fast. Uh, what might be even more impressive than that. 6.29. Three cone drill. What did we call it? Teleporting, right? That's what we the, said. The combine record is Jordan Thomas from Oklahoma. He had a 6.28, which was just one of the most nuts wow. out of nowhere. I was going to say, I, I didn't even know the three got that low at the <laughs> no, combine. No, un unbelievable. But so, I mean, like this guy's threatening the fastest three cone time in combine history. They've also got him clocked at a 4.28 40-yard dash. And when you watch his film, I think he's a little undersized to play as an outside corner. But what impressed me the most about him is he flips his hips and changes direction and accelerates so fast. I, I feel like this guy could be a true slot shutdown option as a nickel defender in the nfl at least he has that athleticism to have that ceiling whether or not he's got kind of the rest of the game for it we'll see i think he's going to get a lot of action this year he was an honorable mention all big 10 last year but he's going to get a lot more playing time this year as well this dude's got rare athleticism and when you're a corner you've got to gravitate towards those kinds of players because it, it is such an important piece of not becoming a mismatch as nfl passing offenses get more diverse You've got to have guys that have the athleticism to be able to counter it. And uh, DJ Turner from Michigan, unbelievable athleticism. The hips flip about as fast as you possibly can. The change directions elite. I can't wait to watch more of this guy this year. Dude, me too. That's the agility numbers alone Stupid. for that position are, are insane and so important. So important. So that, that I'm with you. That was another one that stood out to me on the list that I know we didn't get to on our corner show. And I have another one that we did not get to on our corner show. Riley Moss. The Ooh, Iowa cornerback Iowa. Yeah. that um, these numbers, I don't want to say really surprise me, but they should surprise anyone in the sense that they're out of this world. A first team all Big Ten, big time ball production in his career, uh, 6'1", 193, high school hurdler. But, you know, so the, the vertical being around 42 inches, uh, that's an amazing number. But I think when you look at what he's done on the field, it's you're not blown away. What is just absolutely jaw dropping is Bruce has been told uh, he's clocked the fastest short shuttle time for DBs in Kirk Ferentz's two decades plus at Iowa, blazing through it in 3.85 seconds. For context here, Damn. Zion McCollum, who we thought was one of the craziest athletes in the entire draft last year, did it in 3.94. This dude Damn. did it in 3.85. So you want to talk about agility, acceleration, explosiveness. Riley Moss, man. 
insane. Insane. You ready for uh you ready for 9000 Jason Seahorn comps for this dude, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> it always it always goes back to Jason Seahorn, doesn't it? I, but really though, th this is pretty pretty wild stuff on the testing times for Riley Moss. So yeah. some corners in this class obviously with some crazy tools. Crazy tools. Moss has backed it up on the field though, to be fair. A lot when I read this, a lot of the corners, I was like, oh, I didn't really that guy hasn't popped or, I, you know, he hasn't had the ball production with Moss. He's played a lot, and he's played at a high level in a tough conference. Yeah, and, and Iowa's defense. He could have declared defense, last year. He could have, and Iowa's defense was was really good, good towards really the good last year. Dude, how good is that defense going to be this year? After we did the linebacker show? Yeah, yeah, with a healthy Riley Moss back, that's that that's gonna be that's gonna be huge for him. I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stay with the DB train, and I want to bring this guy up. We have one more uh, summer scouting session left, and it is for safeties. And I was definitely going to get this guy on my radar. Uh, now, certainly after kind of reading everything about him here in this group, it's Brian Branch, the D the defensive back from Alabama. And I do have to call him a defensive back. I'm not even going to call him a safety because he's played all five positions for Alabama. And, and the reason is because this dude is unbelievably strong. He is one of the best tacklers in the entire country. Nick Saban knows that no matter where he puts Brian Branch, he is going to get steady play when it comes to run defense and tackling and, and giving his all in that area. So he's not a liability in any way, shape, or form um, at that spot. He's played – let me look it up. I have the numbers right here. So last year, he played mainly as a slot defender. He played over 400 snaps as a slot defender, 427 snaps there. 128 as a box defender, so more as a strong safety type that's coming down into the box. 23 at wide corner, so he didn't play a, wide, a ton of wide corner snaps, and then 50 snaps at free safety. So they had him more towards uh, towards the box, towards the line of scrimmage, either playing in the slot or uh, playing as a strong safety. But that makes a lot of sense when you look at the fact that he had an 88.1 run defense grade last year. And he had an elite 90.2, I think, pass rush grade, which, you know, Defensive back, pass rushing. It's not like there's a ton of snaps there. It's not like he's he's racking up all sorts of snaps as a pass rusher. But coming off the blitz, either from a safety spot, more toward between the tackles or uh, off the edge, or as a nickel defender, kind of screaming in uh, uh, around the edge in that way, this dude's been fantastic. He's been awesome. Um, reading his little blurb here that we have from Feldman, six foot, 194 pounds, Strong as an ox, dude. Okay, 194 pounds. Please remember this. Get this Get this in your head. This dude is 194 pounds. 565 squat. Nuts. Pretty good. Way more than double his weight. Almost like triple his weight. Power cleans 335. This guy is just a, an absolute unit. And he was also clocked at having a 22.3 miles per hour uh, speed on the GPS system that, that Alabama wears during uh, practicing games. So uh, he's got the speed. He's got the strength. He's got the reliability as a tackler. I can't wait to watch his film for this Thursday as we, we get to talk about safeties. But I wanted to make sure I brought him up as a little uh, little preview for that. I love those weight room numbers at that. And that pound for <laughs> pound. Nuts. Pound for pound, that is a strong, strong It's a good way to say it. Pound for pound might be the strongest defensive back in the country. Yeah, with those numbers and that weight. All right, another one for me. This goes back to the smaller program guys that, you know, you find from this freaks list. Andre, and I want to make sure I pronounce his last name right. I think it's Yoshivas, Yoshivas, Yoshivas. That's how Bruce wrote it in the little blurb. But Princeton wide receiver, Andre okay. Yoshivas. All you need to know is 6'3", 205 from Honolulu, sprinter sprinter this dude has done some crazy stuff on the track that they are estimating his 40 can translate into something in the four twos and that plays i mean that plays and uh his position coach brian flynn said he trains year round on how to start and sprint he bought a jugs machine when he was quarantined during covid so this is a guy that wait, wait he bought a jugs machine yeah how much are jugs machines Great question. You Google that while I talk about Yoshivas. So, all right, how much do you think a jugs machine is? Ten we're grand. Gonna, we're, all right, we're gonna play. We're gonna play Price Is Right. Oh, all right. I forgot. I need to get back on that bit. You do. You need. I'll be. I'll get back. Um, you can't go I said, over. I said ten grand. Yeah, it's it's not ten. It's not ten grand. That's too. That's that's way too high. But you tell me. Let's see if you can get within. 
Let's see if you can get within four hundred dollars of it. One thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Wow, I like the I like the unique guess. No, it's more than that. It is three thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars. So it's four okay. grand for a jugs machine. You could yeah. buy one on Amazon.com right now. Oh, they're running a sale, two hundred dollars off. Wow. Three thousand seven hundred and ninety five. Wait, you this is on Amazon Prime? Uh is it on Prime? Do we got a Prime deal? Do we got a Ain't Prime no deal? No NFL team buying a jugs machine on <laughs> Amazon MF and Prime. My guess of 10 grand was probably now for Andre Yoshivas, who was just chilling at home during COVID. He's yeah, probably- you, I got the Prime one. I feel you, bro. I would do the same thing. I feel you. Oh no, man. you can't you can't order it through Prime, but you two day can, shipping you on a jugs machine? Yeah. Imagine uh, it's probably a tough assembly. It's just one of those things that comes in. You're like really excited when you order it, and then it comes in a flat box that's like ten feet long, and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna be assembling this thing for nine weeks." Today, all right. So today's August 14th because we're recording this on a Sunday. It says that I can get it. Whoa. Okay, hold on here. It's a 350 delivery charge. I didn't think they'd do that on Amazon Prime. Three hundred and fifty dollars. I'm gonna see how well, quick I can get it because being well, that's, near New York City, I get everything in like three hours. It's too dangerous. It's like shipping. Proceed to check out. Okay, now we're fully buying a jugs machine. They're telling me I can have one in in three days. Damn. Yeah. It's For not how, the well, reviews well, how, though. The reviews you, aren't great. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I got yeah. I got myself a four point five star jugs machine right here oh. in the car. Okay. There's some other one. Uh. I think this is from a high school because they they want three hundred fifty dollars for the shit. Oh, okay, so, so I, this I, is I, like I posted. It's, it's got to be heavy as shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyways, all right. Good for good for uh, Yoshivas. Good for Yoshivas with the uh, with the investment of the jugs machine. Man, these small school guys that can run though, they they always Love get a shot. It. They That's always true. get a shot. So yeah, somebody I wanted to throw on the show because I have not watched much Princeton for the draft, but I uh, yes. I I yes. will I will yes. be this year. We will, we're, we're, we're going to get to Princeton. Uh, another dude who we have not talked about, who we didn't get to talk about when we went over interior defensive lineman, but a guy that I wanted to give a shout out to, and I'm glad that he's on this list. Number 65 on the Feldman Freak list, Elijah Chapman, the SMU defensive tackle. Smaller guy, all right? He's about six foot one. Feldman's got him listed at 295. I feel like he's a lot closer to 280. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where 295 is. I don't know what that summer weight is. You know, we try to kind of do that thing with Jalen Twyman, right? When he was at Pittsburgh, where we were like, oh, okay, like he plays at 270. Oh, yeah, but he like bulked up and now he's like 290. Okay, but it wasn't a great 290. I'm pretty sure Chapman's playing his best when he's around 275. I'm going to be honest. I think he's, I think he's about six feet tall. And he's about 275. He's a bowling ball kind of a frame, but the man, you would think that small, you'll go, okay. Speed, right? Speed dude, twitched up, one gap penetrator. He's actually not. I don't think he's super twitched up, which is why I don't think he's going to get drafted super high. It's probably why he went back to school after this past year. But the man is as strong as an ox. Like the dude is just rocked up with strength. He uses that natural leverage so well. And I feel like his upper body and his lower body make him an absolute force. He had an 80, 88.2 overall grade last year. 92.0 run defense grade. I know he's playing at SMU. It's not like he's playing in the SEC every single week. He doesn't control that right now. But this guy Go on, six, dominate. This guy's six feet tall, 275 pounds, and he's just anchoring people out here. He's bull rushing interior offensive linemen who have like 60 pounds on him, anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds on him. It's pretty crazy. He's he's not a super twitched up dude, but the numbers that Feldman has for some uh, for some freak numbers for him, bench pressed over four hundred and ninety five pounds this offseason. So I wonder if he was really just like hitting that five hundred mark. He's done forty two reps of two twenty five. So whenever Elijah Chapman comes out and you are in that draft pool with your buddies of who is going to bench the most on defensive line day, Elijah Chapman, you heard it here first. 42 reps of 225. That's pretty nuts. Back squats over 600 pounds. Power cleans 335. Uh, also did a muscle up while he was at, uh, they say 290 pounds. He makes the muscle up look pretty damn easy. So Jeez. one of the strongest dudes in the country. 
again, pound By for far. pound along the uh, along the defensive line. So shout out to Elijah Chapman. Speaking of the weight room, I can't believe it. We're getting a punter on here. What? And Where's the punter? With number 80, Wisconsin's Andy Vunovich. Trevor, this dude is out of his mind. Out of his mind. 6'3", 230 pounds of pure whey isolate pure protein muscle. <laughs> And he's a good punter. Average 46.4 yards per punt on 49 punts 2021, um, which set the he reset the single season record for punting average at the school by nearly two yards. But who cares about any of that? Vunovich, vertical 35 inches. Uh, his agility time at four seconds is, Bruce highlights in here, quicker than most top DBs. Benched around 400 pounds. And he does the Aiden Hutchinson Turkish getup. I mean, I'm watching the video right now. If if anybody's watching on YouTube and sees my face, there's two kinds of specialists. What? There's the guy because you got to realize their practice time, like they have more time than a lot of other guys on the team. There's the guys that go. This is more in the NFL than college. Go play cards, and then there's the guys that just lift weights, like this Steve guy's, Weatherford, this 900 guy's, hours oh, a week. This guy, Vunovich, is. A weight room machine. And he's a good athlete. He's not just a block of muscle. He's not out there like like when I was his age, like I was a block of muscle, just couldn't move. He this dude can he can move. He can move. He's gonna be run down on the field making tackles. So Vunovich, weight room machine. The, okay, so shout out. Vunovich is a uh future candidate for me to draft in Madden every year and just put the Brian Dawkins dark visor and the Justin Tuck like full face mask on so he's gonna be wearing a shooter sleeve on the left arm and then he's just gonna have like the full justin tuck predator helmet while he's oh yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be my punter dude i'm all in on this it's it's awesome he's awesome two guys punter in the land no no question about it two guys that i wanted to shout out that we've already talked about through summer scouting but i wanted to share that uh i wanted to just give him a shout out again andrew boris the interior offensive lineman who i said was one of the easiest scouting evals that uh that i had as an interior offensive lineman if you think of him as a tackle as potentially a swing tackle okay maybe there's some uh athletic limitations for him where you'd be a little bit worried but honestly for him to play the left guard spot or the right guard spot probably the left guard spot I, I don't think there's a lot to worry about with him. I think that he's pretty steady and it's because of how much strength he has, how much reliability he has. He's on the freaks list here because he's bench pressed 225 more than 40 times. Like this guy's got more than 40 in the repertoire, which is great. Uh, and the other guy was Quinn Johnston, the TCU, oh, man. the TCU wide receiver. Jump out uh, of the ceiling. Which one is, which one is, where does he have Quinn? 19, I believe. Quinn is 23. Okay. Close. Six foot four, 210 pounds is what he has him listed at. Vertical jump is 42 inches. Broad jump is over 11 feet. Clocked at 4'4 flat in the 40-yard dash. Back squats over 575 pounds. Stupid. Just, just insane, in, insanely athletic dude. And I, I honestly, I think that this pops out on tape, man. I really, I really think it does. It's oh, why I, I, I was wide list. receiver two for me. Yeah, why are you on your, on your list, uh, dude? Your guy Owen Papo, who you had at five. Hey, that's who I'm going to next. Holy, okay, talk about my it, last please. one. Okay, I didn't know, I didn't know if we were we were gonna get oh. out of here without you mentioning Owen. No, Papo. my la my last one. I'm so glad you brought that up. So okay. I remember when we did the linebacker show. I said at number five, I'm gonna go with the guy that I think is a projection guy because he was hurt last year was good before that but you know he's big time recruit dude owen papo the six foot one 225 i think he's 230 forget the 435 pound bench press he's a linebacker i'm not surprised they're saying he's been clocked in the 40 at 432 this dude is like an elite running back profile playing linebacker i mean he, he's a faster what Najee harris playing linebacker that's what he Dumb. is dumb wild i can't wait to dude he's i think he is so good and it's just a matter of him being healthy or not and i mean that they say in the auburn program that his nickname is the freak the freak like this dude man i can't wait
we we, ha- we have to talk about the number one guy on this list. It's Mazzy Smith. This is defensive tackle from Michigan. He is a senior. He is draft eligible. And he's number one on Feldman's freak list. So I'll, I'll read a little bit of a blurb of him here because there's a lot. And you guys need to go read this article from Feldman. Go get an athletic uh, athletic scholarship. Sure, go get an athletic scholarship. <laughs> if you're, if, We're if giving you one can, away on stock exchange. She's our athletic <laughs> scholar of the year. We'll give it to a kid that graduates college. Hey, yeah, we're, we're not out, paying for it but we'll give you an athletic subscription. We're out here recruiting. We're recruiting the, uh, oh the listeners. Uh, so, okay, six foot three, 337 pounds, all right? So large individual. Smith does 22 reps on the bench press, but that's not with 225. It's with 325. Close grip benches, 550 pounds, get a vertical inch of 33, broad jump of, uh, of nine, four and a half. Well, uh, NFL coming in and... Give it a second. If there's three cone. This this one is see. Sorry, I was skimming a little bit because he he writes a lot about him. Six nine five three cone would have been the fastest among any defensive tackle in Indianapolis. Fastest was seven three three, and this guy's running sub seven three cone. Are you serious? At six three 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 seven, Dude. that is truly, truly wild. This guy, he's a senior, and there look, there was a lot of defensive line talent at Michigan last year. Aiden Hutchinson took up a lot of the uh, a lot of the notoriety, a lot of the hype. David Ojabo came in halfway through the season and was like, okay, hold on, they got another guy over here. And so, like those two guys are uh, mainly what we talked about last year. But Mazzy Smith, number one on this list for a reason, man. That's just, this is these are bonkers numbers. I cannot wait to we. I got to pop on the tape of this dude. We, I we, did a little bit. He, it's weird. He's. I mean, obviously, the total package is an athlete. He He's not totally figured it out on the field yet. But, I mean, we've seen Michigan pull this act before where they have these guys that play a little bit and their athletic profile is, like, as 99 percentile, and then they figure it out their last year. I mean, yeah. Quiddy Pay took off, Aiden took off, Ajabo took off. And it, you know, we're going to see our, our skier, Welsh off, maybe take off. Like, who knows? But... So I, I didn't really overreact to it, um, but man, this, I mean, like you said, Trevor, there's so much on Massey in this article that you really got to go read it. He got like six paragraphs. Right. And it's did. everything is just everything about him from the weight room to the mobility to the agility is just out of this planet. You can't teach that kind of athleticism, not to like bring up a stupid cliche, but that's some, that's some pretty, that's some pretty nuts stuff. Before we he get could out have of here. A, he could not improve on the field and I think he'd go in the third round still. Oh, that's I mean, the kind like, of profile he has. Four, and he's he's four. not ready to play. He's not ready to play yet. But yeah, that's that feels that's like the ball the, of clay. He is that feels like the floor with how athletic this dude is. Uh, before we get out of here, I got to talk to all the football fans out there. Now's the time to join hey, the you next football fans generation. What up, football fans? The <laughs> generation radio voice. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? With Rainmakers Fantasy Football, the first ever nft fantasy game from draft draft kings okay hold on hold on hold on i'm gonna explain it's the only nft fantasy game licensed by the nfl pa now you can play all season for millions of prizes building the ultimate nft franchise right now everyone can get their first full roster starter pack for free so here's what it is playing rainmakers is simple you buy sell bid and win player nft cards so think of madden ultimate team okay this is madden ultimate team in real life you could buy player NFT cards for the biggest names in the game throughout regular drops and auctions over at DraftKings Marketplace. You craft a lineup of athletes using the NFT collection, and you earn points for touchdowns, receptions, and more, just like daily fantasy football. Build your NFT franchise. Enter to free Rainmakers football contests all season long to compete for millions of prizes. The next generation of fantasy sports is here download the DraftKings daily fantasy app right now sign up with the promo code pff plus click click the little rainmakers title uh and opt in to get your first card free plus play for millions of prizes all football season long while building the ultimate nft fantasy franchise with rainmakers football that is the promo code pff build play win only over at DraftKings. contest entries depend on the type and number of NFTs you, he- you hold at the time. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void, void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Kind of a cool concept. If you're into Madden Ultimate Team at all, I'd really check it out. Go download the DraftKings app. Go try to play Rainmakers. It could be a, could be a lot of fun. All right, Connor. That was it. Hey, man. It, that was a fun one because we brought a lot of new players to the show. Uh, we talked about the being a, on the roller coaster of, you know, doom and gloom 
back to normal. Being a Jets fan. What do we got? Oh, we got to finish the draft class this week. Yeah. Safeties, Safeties on Thursday. And then we are, we were joking about it on the phone a couple of days ago, how, how excited we are to actually finish the prospect previews because making the big board is now, yep. just, it's been in sight for a couple of weeks and we can't wait to get there. So hopefully everybody's been enjoying those. Making the big board, we're going to do a top 50 together. It's going to be the Stock Exchange top 50. Mm-hmm. It's going to be one hell of an exercise. And then, man, you blink, and you got real football games to do some actual stock watching for the draft next year. Yeah, we're going to build for you guys the NFL Stock Exchange big board on this, like on the podcast. Like We, we, we obviously have our big boards. I'm going to finish my big board um, that, that I'm going to bring into it. Connor's going to have his board that he's going to bring into it. But then we are going to collaborate – with the two of us having a unified NFL SE preseason 2023 big board. It's and we're like a scouting meeting. That. Yeah, no, it I mean, is. I don't be- think you and I are going to have any conversation. The conversation is going to be on air. Right, here exactly. That's what I'm saying. Consolidate the rankings. And I, I think that I've actually never done that in my life. I've always been a lone wolf in this brick room. So I'm, I'm really pumped to, to work together on this board and have those conversations. We doing that on Monday? We're not saving it till Thursday, right? We're doing it next I Monday. Know, I'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, all right. Well, we'll we're going to do it next Monday. Before then, of course, we got the safety list. I'm excited for that one, though. I'm excited. We we got we got to we got to we got to wrap it all up with a real fancy bow. Nice looking bow. That'll be summer scouting, and then we'll hit the big board. And then after that, we got the mock draft coming up too. It's going to be exciting, guys. We're going to lead you right into college football season, right into the NFL season. It's going to be a good time. Stick with us. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. Thanks so much for listening to the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast.